hello, hello, and as always, a big welcome back to the Lift Your Life podcast. I hope everyone, as always, is blooming marvellous. I know I am. I am marvellous because it, well, it is now Monday, and yesterday in the UK, we had a boss-ass storm, which has meant that it's dampened down the pollen, and hay fever, if any of you guys out there have hay fever, you will know how horrendous it has been over the last, ugh, few days weeks oh it's just been horrendous like I've been having I can't even see on a morning because my eyes are that swollen and sore my throat has been disgusting my energy has been in the absolute dustbin um oh what else what else uh oh yeah just sneezing so much I've been having chronic nosebleeds it's been disgusting really so this cooler weather has been very much welcomed today's episode something a little bit different um over the last sort of few weeks I've had quite an inc- no, not an increase in following like I'm an influencer but over the social media platforms I've been having you know more people come to my page more people new listening podcast so quite a few of you guys are new to me and my world so I could have done a whole you know about me and my business but you don't want to hear about that so I thought I would just do a podcast that for even some of you guys who are OGs and know me you think you know me inside out I thought I would just do a bit of a fun podcast to give you some eight fun facts about myself that allow you to get to know me more as a human, because I am a human. I don't just do fitness and eat, sleep, breathe that for a living. And for those of you who don't know me, just to kind of gauge what I'm about and the vibe of myself. So let's go in. Number one, I am the eldest of four. So I actually have three younger siblings, two brothers called Ed and Will and a little sister called Imogen. And honest to God, I am so grateful and so blessed that I would count my siblings as my best friends in the world. They are literally amazing. I remember growing up and hearing, you know, other like horror stories of people arguing with their siblings and squabbling and fighting all the time. And I just remember being like, I can't relate. Like we'd have the odd little, the odd little, you know, fight and argument, but nothing to the point where people used to literally hate their brothers and sisters. And honestly, I ever had since since I can remember like the best relationship with them all like it made growing up so much fun because we had so many adventures together I remember my sister being born I've always like been so protective of her and now she's older I feel like we can connect in a different way because she's now 15 I'm nearly 25 Ed and Will are both adults as well like well we think we are we're not (laughs) technically we're adults we don't act like adults so yeah it's absolutely incredible absolutely amazing and I am just so blessed to have that. Um, Being the oldest, though, I was always the rule breaker. So I had to be the one to break the boundaries, you know, the first first child to underage drink and all that sort of thing. And, you know, get to stay a bit bit later. I see what my sister's allowed to do now. I'm like, there's no way I'll be allowed to do that at that age. So, yeah, I was the boundary breaker. But, um, yeah, four of us and wouldn't change it for the world. Number two, um, I'm an absolute Disney geek. There is not a room in my house without something Disney in it. If you are watching this on the video version, you will actually see at the top of my shelf there, there is Lift Your Life, which is my coaching company. And obviously they have a podcast in with like a Mickey Mouse and like the Mickey Mouse um, lettering. You won't be able to see it, but at the bottom of my shelf, I've got a quote, which is from Alice in Wonderland. Um, Because it's a great quote. I've also got my Disney phone case here and throughout my house as well. What else have I got? So in my dining like area, I've got a Be Our Guest poster. In my hallway, I've got a Ratatouille poster. <laughs> in my kitchen, like the bowls, plates, mugs, Disney galore. In my living space, um, is there actually anything in my living area? I don't actually think there is. Well, that needs to change. <laughs> that needs to change ASAP. Uh, bedroom, I've got a poster of up in my bedroom. I've got some Disney bedding as well. Don't even care. Don't even care. Um, my bathroom's got a Winnie the Pooh like um, bath um, mat thing. Is that what it's called? Shower mat, bath mat? The rug thing you put underneath your bath or shower, whatever the hell you call that. And then my spare bedroom has got um, a Disney poster in it as well. And a couple of my old Disney teddies from when I was, say, when I was younger, probably about five years ago. But they live in there. So there's just Disney everywhere. I'm absolutely obsessed. I love Disney. I love everything about it. 
happily wear Disney jumpers and stuff. Like it just doesn't bother me. And I actually have a Disney tattoo on my right leg. So on my right uh, ankle, I have got the symbol from Moana. And it, it was a dual meaning tattoo, to be fair. It was partly because Moana and Disney, but it's actually an Aboriginal symbol, which is um, symbolic of rebirth and new beginnings. And at that point in my life, I was going through quite a lot of life change. And I was like, well, I want to symbolize the hell out of this. So let's do the Disney tattoo. Why not? So yeah, Disney. And to expand on that, point number three, um, Disneyland, Disney World, my favorite place ever. Uh, I've been a combined time between Paris and Florida 11 times. And I'm going to say and counting because I want to go again. I want to go to the California one. Like that would be amazing. And I'm pretty sure there's one in is it Tokyo, Hong Kong, uh, wherever it is. I want to go there. Me and my little sister are already planning to go next year to Disneyland Paris again uh, because she's going to finish her exams before like it gets to like peak season because she finishes you know GCSEs like May June time so we're already planning to go then when it's cheaper and quieter uh but yeah Disneyland Disney World if any of you ever want to go just slide in my DMs and I'll probably come with you because it's my favorite place in the entire freaking world number four is I don't really have a desire or passion to have kids um obviously with what's going on with my health situation I don't really know if I can have them <laughs> make a joke out of it so we don't cry but I've got like, it's really weird when I try and think about my future and like what the next sort of five to 10 years look like for myself. I really can't see myself like with children. I can't see myself like doing the whole pregnancy and babies and family thing. I don't know if it's because I've just got so used to being like introvert and living on my own. You know, I've, I've never really had like boyfriends for very long. Story for another day, but you know, I've not. And I, I wonder if that's part of it, but it's like, I just don't have this like, interest that people are like oh, I want a family one day I'm just like I don't really know but I do want a family of cockapoos one day because I am dog obsessed well I say dog obsessed I'm specific dog obsessed there's certain breeds of dog that I just don't like I just don't like I don't like their vibe I don't think they're cute I look at them and just think why why would you buy a dog that looks like that when you could have something as cute and as hilarious as like a cockapoo Cockapoos are the best breed of dog and anyone who tries to tell me different, um, get in the living. They are not only the cutest things in the world in terms of how they look, but their personality is hilarious. I've got two cockapoos at my parents who I class as my babies. And to be honest, it's the only reason that I ever go back home because they're just so goddamn cute. They're so funny. They make me laugh. They're so affectionate and I love them to bits. So I am going to get myself a cockapoo. It is on my to-do list at some point, as close to the now as possible. However, I'm not going to do it until I know where I want to be. I mean, where I rent right now might get funny with me having a dog. I've got away with words, so we'll do our best. But I don't really know, do I want to buy a house in the next year or so? Do I wait till then? Do I just want to go move somewhere? Because I can take my job anywhere in the world and I have had you know, thoughts about relocating. You know, a few of you guys have asked me when I've been on my Dubai trips, you know, could you see yourself living there? And it's like, well, I don't know, maybe, because it's it's such a positive, you know, upbeat place of people who just want to better themselves. Maybe that's an environment that I belong. Maybe I don't want to go live somewhere, but I just love the fact that I can pick up my laptop and go to Spain or America or Mexico or Bali or wherever I want and not lose a day's work really because I can still work anywhere in the world I literally just need my laptop and wi-fi and we're good to go and and um maybe my ring light because then <laughs> I'm joking but I just need those things so I don't want to be a a bad dog owner and buy one and then like fob my mum will look after all the time she'd be fine but that's not the point but yes, one day I'm going to have a family of cockapoos, um, babies. I don't know. Right now, can't see it happening at all. And um, to bounce off that point, number five is I am a total introvert. You might not get that vibe from me if you watch a lot of my content and listen to these podcasts. Like I seem quite an out there person. I seem very con like I am confident, but I'm confident in my zone of genius, which is me doing you know this job podcasts and you know I'm quite confident at, you know public speaking and things like that like I don't actually really get nerves speaking at things anymore but being in like big places so big crowds big parties 
gatherings is not my vibe at all. Like I find those things very like draining and challenging. And it's not to say that it's a bad thing in terms of like the people I'm with, I don't like or anything like that, but I just find it hard. I find it so hard. I'm so happy in my own routine and in my own company. Like the worst thing I could actually imagine, like when people go to these big concerts, like big festivals, start outside with loads of people, that literally is like my idea of of, of hell. Like, oh, makes me cringe. <laughs> makes me just feel a little bit, a little bit sick. So whenever I go to these big expos and things, like don't get me wrong, I love spending the time with the people that I go with and seeing the things, but afterwards I always feel like battered because it's like my social battery for things like that is so finite uh, yes yeah, not me it's not me at all number six is I'm a total early bird if you did not know that so yes I am in that typical 5 a.m hustle club and it's not because I think right 5 a.m grind harder it just serves me better I work so much better in the morning I would rather get up uh, you know five o'clock in the morning start work at half past five in the morning and then work through till you know, my working day, Monday to Friday is usually, and Saturday to be fair now, tends to go on till about seven-ish in the evening, which might sound like a long time. Some days it's broken up more, like I'll go to the gym or whatever, but most most days I'm, I'm pretty much flat out, aside from the odd walk between then and then. And one reason for getting up earlier is I can ensure that I do get everything done that I need to do in a day, but also that I can then box off my work at that evening point and do the work that I need to do when I am most focused and energized because in the evening my brain is just not good like big big focus energy demanding tasks for me to try and do those in an evening just would not happen just it wouldn't happen I don't have the capacity to do it that is why I like to get up early do my big tasks for the day in the morning so that's always when I will do things like client check-ins any sort of big things that I want to write or do that really require my brain power will always get done early. Then as the day goes on, I can do tasks that, yes, still of course require effort, but just aren't as much of a, a heavy focus for myself. So things like um, client catch-up calls and programming and content and um, consultation calls, things like that, I can do later on in the day but if I could if I could if I could choose right you could you can only pick like four or five hours to work in the day what would you do I'd literally do like yeah five till ten and then I'd enjoy the rest of my day for sure number seven is I absolutely love cars now when I say I love cars I'm not one of those geeks who knows all the technicalities of cars like I'm not I'm not like a petrol head in that way I just love from an aesthetic point a very nice looking car I do. I've got that from my dad, I think, because he's been like a bit of a car whore. <laughs> he's had more cars than um, um, I could even I could even tell you, um, like ridiculous amount of cars. But I just love looking cars. I love, you know, aesthetic looking cars. I've always wanted to have like a different car. And I, I don't even know. It's not to, like show off or anything. I've just always wanted that. Like when you're driving, I've, I've always just want I've always, I've always as a kid like loved it like you know when you go in those little like racing car things as kids like I've always loved that and the car I have now I absolutely adore so I own a bright yellow Audi A1 which I have want I wanted before I got for ages like over a year because it was just so different like I always wanted a nice like Audi or Mercedes something a bit nicer than just your standard Ford or say it's no offense to Ford or say your drivers they're fine but just something a bit a bit nicer and I just wanted a color that no one else had. Like everyone's got black and white and gray. I had red before, but I was like, eh, red, everyone's got red. So I was like, fuck it, I'll go yellow. And it's brown colors, so even better. I do absolutely love it to bits, but Lucy being Lucy, happy, never satisfied, what's next? I have my eyes on the next car that I want, but it's going to be an upgrade, let's put it that way, that I can't quite justify yet, really. So it's in my head that I am going to do it and I'm going to get it. I'm just not ready to, to make, I, I probably could do it, but I'd be like pushing it. Do you know what I mean? Like we we'll have to compromise on like, you know, just living off baked beans the rest of the month, but no. So I'm not going to be an idiot and do it now, but I know what my next car is and I'm going to keep that a secret until eventually, I'm going to put it out there until I get it. 
you know, I'm going to put that energy into the universe. I'm not going to put it as a, I hope I get it. I'm going to put it as a, when I get it. And it's going to be freaking sick. Let's put it that way. And then the final part about me, one that you might all know, some of you might not know, is that I have a degree in psychology. I knew I wanted a career in helping people. And when I was younger and sort of deciding what I wanted to do, I fluctuated between many things. I was like, I want to be a teacher. I want to maybe go into some sort of mental health um, based something to help the way that mental health helped me. I wanted to be primary, secondary, primary teacher, secondary teacher. Like it just completely fluctuated. But all I ever knew is I wanted to help people. I wanted to help people better themselves and move forward because that is something that has always given me such fulfillment, like always. I saw psychology as a door opener for that because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. School were like, you're smart, you go to uni. So I was like, okay, I'll go and do the whole uni thing. That's cool. Um, if you say so. And that was the subject that I was doing that I thought would open up the most potential for that. Um, you know, it's very diverse. So I did it. Didn't have a clue where I wanted to take things. Realized that the actual routes that I wanted to take in terms of potentially becoming like an actual psychologist or therapist, like to go to those levels, you have to do further years of studying. So a master's and a PhD. And I was like, fuck, okay, this is, this is going to be long. And you've then got to continue doing research. Like, I don't like the research. I just like helping people. In my first few years of uni, that's when I got my PT, worked with her. She helped change my life, changed me physically, mentally, emotionally with my confidence. And I just thought, this is it. This is what I want to do. I'm fucking loving helping people. I'm loving this change that fitness has brought to my life. And it was like a penny drop moment of, well, I need to do a PT course then. I literally need to do this. Realized this like right at the end of my degree. So obviously stuck it out, got the piece of paper and the 40 grand worth of debt to go with it. And then the second that I finished studying, I just worked a bit more so that I could afford to pay for the PT course. Went full-time at work, got my PT qualifications between, I think it was the July and the December. because it was like an in-person course slash home study. Then quit my job. Um, in retail and went to be a PT and the rest is history um I don't know if I've ever actually done a full story and how if your life came to be from PT to I'm sure I've definitely spoken about it on a podcast episode before but for any of you who want the, the short story started the PT in got the gym job in December started the PT in January uh we had the lockdown in March <laughs> so was out of work pretty much straight away started my online business for a bit of fun and then just over the next year, it just went from a bit of fun side hustle, two or three clients to a business that I went all in with. And yeah, here we are today, people. Here we are today. But yeah, that is it. That is me in a nutshell. And actually, just to kind of wrap up that last point of, you know, always wanting to help people. You know, when people say like, my DMs are always open, slide in. It's a very generic thing to say. I genuinely mean that. I always strive to get back to every single DM through Facebook, through Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I think that's everywhere. People message me email, people on my email list, anywhere where people message me, I will always get back to you, whether that is a question, some advice, or just simply a chat about any of the above things, especially if you're a Disney geek like me, like please slide in my DMs about Disney. I mean that. But yeah, I, I'm always happy to have a chat. I'm I love talking, as you probably guess, which is probably you'll probably get a voice note from me rather than typing it out. But yes, if you do ever want to contact me, um, as always, Instagram is probably the best place. That is Lucy underscore lift your life if you don't already follow me. And I hope that's just been a bit of an interesting one and you have learned something about myself today. So I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Have yourself a fantastic rest of your day and I will catch you on next week's episode.